thinking around how they focus on differentiation uh, in the way they do IT. And this whole concept of cloud computing we'll talk about. Uh, and, and typically in my 37 years here, uh, you know, retail is always the laggards in adopting technologies, and this is no different this time around, so uh, most retail is starting that journey. Uh, experiment, experiment, and experiment, and see what it is that's going to impact my customer experience, and get those into production as fast as we can, and then keep experimenting and experimenting. Uh, so just keeping that in mind, from an AWS perspective, what we're looking at and how we're trying to help our customers in retail. These siloed systems for each different channel we're trying to connect with our customer and those, those channels are not talking to each other. So how do we start developing and architecting systems so that they're channel agnostic, whether they're on the web, on their phone, or in my store, however they want to in the details or adopting this cloud. And again, I you know, don't want to dwell too long on this, but you know, when you look around uh, dev test, uh, I wish I hadn't said dev test there, because if you back up a, a few sentences, I kept talking about experiment, 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 and that's what they're really doing. We're not talking about running traditional dev test. We're talking about using all the cloud capabilities and services to try new things, and we keep experimenting and trying and seeing how we can impact that customer experience in this holiday season. And in fact, you guys probably see it every year uh, in all the papers around the world on Black Friday, how many retailers' websites for the inventory side trying to get better insight into operational inventory or merchandising, demand forecasting, these types of things. The reason I wanted to put frictionless experiences up there is because every retailer I talk to wants to know how did you do Amazon Go? And just do Amazon Go for me. And when you really start talking to the retailer and you start working backwards from, well, what is the business outcome you're really trying to do? It's, it really comes more down to the shopping journey and where I can remove friction from that journey in terms of, here's some examples of what we're doing there. Uh, AR, VR, uh, MR, so the physical and digital from uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. Lots of cool stuff going on there, I'll talk about that. And then of course this whole idea of IoT, you know, having things and sensors constantly feeding me data of what's really going on in my stores, what's really going on with learning from all of these building blocks that are feeding me data to make actual insights. And then again, as we uh, deploy these types of systems and re-architect these types of systems, uh, I would uh, promise that you do serve them back. So again, that data lake now allows me to do all this AI ML, and not to give a, an Amazon sales pitch here, but just wanted you to see the types of services that we can bring to bear around voice or chat pops or uh, speech or languages. And then you're gonna see even um, a couple of really cool things we're doing that uh, with the retail team being in place at AWS now and working with uh, business units like Amazon Retail or Amazon Go or the Alexa business unit, how we can take those same services that we're building to support one of the most complex retail enterprises in the world and provide them to you. Everybody thinks about Alexa, right? And what I would argue is uh, if Alexa is in your area, as Alexa goes around the world, that is a channel that you should be using to connect with your customers. And from an Amazon perspective, the Alexa business unit is more than willing to work with you on how you use that as a channel to connect with your customers. So for example, retail to address the business issues that they bring to us and the ideas that they bring to us on how they want to work with their customers. So here's the example of an innovation on the digital side of the business. I think mean, everybody's familiar with one click checkout. And then how do we get to just walk out shopping? So you take one click checkout digitally to the physical side of how we do just walk out shopping. It's like Amazon Kinesis video streams. So when you think of the Amazon Go stores, uh, having this constant real-time video stream of what's going on in their stores and having to make real-time decisions of, you know, did that shopper pick up an item and keep it? 
uh, or did that shopper pick up an item and move it to somewhere else? And now I've got a plant again problem. This whole concept around, you know, we uh, we pioneered ID by log and cookie. So now that's just kind of common across most websites. You typically don't have to log in but one time and tell it to save. Uh, I gave you a couple of other examples around, uh, you know, safety and food tampering or, uh, or planogram compliance or, you know, in this case, lots of examples we can do around demographics of the customers walking into the store, uh, how Amazon.com developed its product recommendations engine, and a lot of retailers are always asking us, well, why can't uh, we just do that? Or if you can look at it from the digital side to the, um, so you, you, when you walk in that four star store, it is not merchandise or set like any other retail store you've ever been. You can start using that uh, today. And, and I need to probably back up from that because we still are in um, early testing with customers of this, so it's not generally available, but we can get you into the early beta program in terms of getting more intelligent about your inventory. So in this case, managed search is your ground truth, which is again helping retailers tag their items and their products and reducing their cost by up to 70% to do that. So again, that relationship I have and the learnings that I have, I'm not um, giving the ML algorithms about how we do this, uh, but we do have a product now called AWS RoboLings or Fusion that we might have that's feeding us data on how to uh, get uh, more operational insights and efficiencies into how we run our stuff. And tell you just how important these really are and how the culture of how you organize DevOps to do this is important. So that picture is actually a picture of over 1,000 microservices that drive Amazon.com's website. And each of those microservices is managed by what we call a two pizza team, meaning that it's six to eight people that have autonomy to do what they need to do to serve their customers best. And we use API uh, linkages between those microservices so that they literally can update their microservices as often as they want without worrying about having to do regression testing and all that mess to make sure I don't break something else. And this is what gives uh, Amazon the agility to literally uh, take care of, uh, in this case, they could update this website every second of the day if they wanted to. Amazon.com Marketplace, a uh, great example there would be like the uh, J. Crew home, where uh, you can actually shop J. Crew through the Amazon Marketplace. 